okay, we're back down here after a month off it. So, mine carts ready. We're going this way towards the front of the house. Now we've tore the carpet up, giggity, and laid some more old stuff down. Basically, that's just to protect the floorboards because this place gets covered in mud with us, keep traipsing up and down it. Empty buckets ahoy! Hydraulics are all set in here ready. We've put a new cable in this morning because this had so many joins on it because of all the stages. So we've lashed a total new one right up to the pump. Right, this way. Now this video is sponsored by Surfshark and if you use my link, you get 83% off and three months of free. But if you use it in June, you get their added antivirus protection completely for free. Oh. Right ho, it's back to tunnel, here we go. It's been a while. Now I'm going to put this video together slightly different than the others because we've all seen a lot of digging and a lot of welding but there is a lot of questions, a lot of things that you've been asking me during this whole process which I'm going to answer as we go along. Some very big and interesting questions. Now it's always quite tricky in these early stages for building a new section after you've just concreted because these lower parts, you've got nowhere to push the hydraulics up against to push them out of the way. So we've had to kind of compromise, put a bit of metal across the tunnel on the other side and push against that, which worked very nicely. Oh, that's what we like to see. Then it's onto the usual job of pushing a pipe up to the surface for ventilation. As you can see, it's getting a little bit dusty down here. Oh, uh, I can see daylight. Little spot of light, I see little spot of light. Hello. Hello. Okay, got a ventilation hole, very nice. Now, first one of your questions. When you push that pipe up through, how do you know you're not gonna hit anything, Colin? Because in one video, you did nearly hit your cold water pipe. Well, we don't know exactly, but this is the thinking and the thought process behind before we do it. If you look at this, we've got the shed up here, which is where I'm stood now. We've got the garage, we've got the house. And then we've got the tunnel, which at the moment comes along here, turns left, and then comes up into the house here. Now, of course, where we're going at the moment is along here to the front of the garden. Now, a few videos back, we lifted the sewer up here, little manhole, and then we can see that it went off at an angle, and then it shoots all the way down here to these two pipes here. Now, this one is for the toilet, and that one is for the bath and the sink in my upstairs bathroom. Now, the two tricky pipes which we need to worry about is the water and the gas. Now, my cold water main comes up in my house here, and it'll either go straight along here out to the stop tap or like we know there is a random pipe which comes somewhere out here because on the edge of my garage here there used to be an outside toilet in which the water pipe used to come up there so somewhere that comes along here and then comes to there so we nearly caught that one now whether there is another T piece in there which goes along here to the main tap in the path I don't know, but if we hit that, it's not the end of the world, we can go out to the path and we can switch it off. That's not a problem. Now, the one that is the problem is the gas pipe. My gas meter is here, just behind the wall where the tunnel come up. We did see that in the last video when we dug it all out. You could see it go in and you could see it go under, and it is not very deep. It literally looks like it's about three or four inches below the concrete. What we've done, we've dug a little bit of a chase out of that concrete and we've found it so we can see where it is and then we've chased it along so we can see where it curls round and then starts to go straight out to where the main gas pipe is in the road. So we think, well we don't think, we know, that it comes along here and then it turns about here and then it goes off in a straight line and off it goes. So we can see that one. Now the electrics that come into my house here, or obviously they'll go out somewhere and disappear. We don't need to worry about them yet. We're not gonna get to them until we get to this front bit here, so not too fussed. That's all good. So, when we push these pipes up all along here, we need to work out where you obviously worry about the gas pipe, but we sort of know where that is now, and this sewer pipe. Now, of course, when digging out for the gas pipe, we decided to dig a little, little bit deeper, and we found the sewer pipe, and the whole thing's encased in concrete, which is now took something which should be four inches wide and made it about 12 inches wide, which is a bit of a pain. And then also, when we dug down there, just to see exactly where we were, we did end up finding the cold main. So it turns out the whole thing trickles right down the side of the house here, really close to the house, which they don't normally do that, so so that's where everything goes. Now, another question I get asked is, what do your neighbours think of this, Colin? Well, I can't speak for all of them, but one of them did come round, and this is a brief shot of his reaction. 
How the f you did all this? Yeah. And you you never see anybody working here. You go you go down. Fucking right, I am. Oh my f God. <laughs> There was a lot of swearing. Now, I'll upload the rest of that as a YouTube short because the whole thing was filmed in portrait. But what's going on here? So, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Now, if you don't know what a VPN is, it's basically a security blanket around your device. Encrypts your data going to and from the internet, protects your passwords, and protects you on public Wi-Fi. And it also does cool little things, like when you're on holiday, you can stream services that you subscribe to in your country of origin, and the internet thinks you're still there. Now, this, of course, is a service that you have to pay for, but with my special offer, click the link in the description, you get 83% off and three months free. But if you download it in June, you get their antivirus software completely free i mean that's a deal come on people I'm surfing a shark in a river it's gotta be worth a click i fell in nearly twice i can barely balance on the thing come on come on get on it okay got another two and a half meters this way progress is good now just a little thing on the mesh I basically use the two inch mesh on the ceiling because it's kind of big enough that the concrete can go all the way through it, but small enough to stop enough rubbish and stuff and to still support the ceiling and all the rocks above it. And then of course we use the inch mesh on the concrete down here because that actually holds it back. But of course we want the cement to go through it up in the ceiling to meet the clay above it. Right. Right, start getting a bit of the steel in. We've got the floor down. Very nice, Colin. Now you may know it's up here. What is all this? Expanding foam. Well, there was a tiny little bit of a gap where the cement like come down underneath the house foundations. There was a little bit of like a one inch or two inch gap at one point where it didn't quite rise up and meet the clay, which is obviously not very good. Now we did experiment. We're trying to pump concrete down there with our little air powered concreting pump device. But all we did is just spray it everywhere and get a complete mess. <laughs> So instead, we've chucked a load of expanding foam down there, which is not my favourite material ever, but it's better than having nothing and having a little bit of a void. So we've done that, we've sorted that out very nice. We've got some walls, let's get this little bit of tunnel fabricated up, and we can get some concrete down, can't we? <laughs> Right, that's got all that welded and fabricated. Lovely, even painted the floor. Now, if you check out over here, because we've dug a bit further this time this way, if I get right this way, right up to the rock face, turn the camera around, you can see the mesh a bit better. How we mesh it all up and stop the concrete from bellowing over, which is nice. Now, this is the side where the house is, so we've got a nice big thick bit here. That's like at least 12 inches all the way down there. That's a foot, 30 centimetres, 300 mil. And then it's obviously nice and thick over the top to support it. It's a tiny bit thinner down there, but it's not much. It's still like 250. So there we go. Right, let's get some concrete in. And also, somebody watched the last video from Jurafix and they've sent us a proper concrete vibrator. It's got all sorts of funny attachments on and everything. Thank you very much. If you own a company, of course, and you see me struggling with something, send away. <laughs> There we go, concrete's gone off. Very nice. Beautiful, it's got right up there in the patches. When we vibrate it, you can see it proper like bulges out on this mesh, which is really good, because obviously if it's pushing this direction, then it's pushing in all the other directions, and it's filling all these little gaps in up against the rock face, and that is a good thing. Right, next thing we need to do, we need to dig in this direction a little bit more, build the next bit, and then just, just keep on going. Wish we could have a drink. A two or three or four sounds good, I think. 
and we'd be feeling pretty Now somebody else has said, Corin, that crack that you found way back in video two, whatever was that, did it ever lead anywhere? Well, it turns out those cracks, once you get down to about three meters, you literally find one about every meter, every a meter and a half. And if you kind of look at this quarry, which is only a few miles away from my house, you can see the rock seams, basically how they form in like kind of big segregation bits and cracks and stuff. Now, a little bit higher than that, up in the top bits, I think they're still there. They just get filled with all the soil and clay, which gets washed down from above. But the draft that comes up it, is still really, really odd because, you know, I've tried to show here with some smoke club, it just waft up, especially if you're opening and shutting the shed or the house door above, it really creates an updraft. So where they go, I don't know, they probably travel for miles in one direction and then come out at the side of the road or something, who knows? But yes, we haven't found a cave yet. Every time I reveal one, I'm kind of hoping that it'll have some big expanse and cave and then it will save us a whole lot of digging, but it's not happened yet, never mind. <laughs> Well, this is easy. <laughs> oh. So then, Con, this is a very good opportunity for another question. With all this digging, have you actually found anything of interest? Okay, I've not found any gold sovereigns or any prehistoric animals, and I'm a bit annoyed because only last year, five miles up the road in Rutland Water, they uncovered a dinosaur in the mud, and then only two and a half miles up the road in the field, they had discovered a Roman mosaic. So Furs was hoping for something. But what I do have is a lovely rock collection. Now, first off, we've got this one here. This was basically found on the edge of one of those cracks, and I presume all the water's come down, and it's kind of sucked all the salts and stuff out of the rock, and it's made like this weird spongy stalactite mess on the side of it. And I saw this quite a bit, but this is definitely the best one I've managed to retrieve, and also like the, the most vivid one, so that's pretty cool. Now we've got this. This was in between a massive rock, and it's split open, and it looks like it's a shell compressed in the middle. Is it a shell? I don't know, let me know. It kind of could be a shell, but then why isn't there more shells? And then we've got these dark bits that you see in the rock here. That's basically where leaves or foliage has come down, got squished in, rotted off, and then kind of imprinted itself on the rock. Again, I'd come across that every now and again, but this is the best one I managed to get at. But we've got this, this has got to be a fossil. Look at this little spiky thing sticking out here. What's that? Back of a stickleback fish or something? That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Oh, come on geologists, let me know. But of course, best of all, what we find, the most exciting, is quartz, which is basically like a naturally forming crystal, isn't it? There's some really good bits we found. Look, there's something like glistening in there. This is the biggest single bit I found. I was pleased when I saw that. I was like, <laughs> it's like Minecraft in real life. And we've got these little bits here. Look, this is a nice little daggerhead one, which is nearly all quartz running through that. Oh, that's lovely, Colin. And then we've got this bit where it's like, they don't really form in lumps. They kind of go in seams and round, wrap round in bits, and like, it's like they're veins of quartz. But there we are. So, no dinosaurs, and no Roman burial sites or anything like that, but that's probably a good thing, because we'd have old Tony Robinson and Time Team up here stopping us, wouldn't we? We don't want that. Right, let's get back on with it. Right, next stage, all dug out. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Now, we've got a little bit missing out here. Took a bit out of the frame. There's gonna be a permanent vent which comes down here into a little box into the tunnel because obviously up till now we put the vents up to the top which we then used to pour the concrete but of course we do need some permanent ventilation down here so this is going to be my low level ventilation it's going to be a little box and I'm going to put a house a fan in it and then down the other end here right down here once this bit heads out into the garden I'm going to put a high level vent which will come up here and go straight up the side of the shed so it will have high and low level ventilation and therefore will sort of self circulate now, whether that will work over such a long corridor, I don't know. Right, let's get this bit framed up, steeled up, make that boosh. Ah, can't f me, Jake. Totally should have welded this pipe on the top of that before I put it in. But originally, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that because we're going to drop it all in down in one length. But then, of course, we realised that the holes didn't line up. And I've got carried away and I've sort of partially welded it in and now I can't get it out. So I've got to go over here to try and weld it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, 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 we're good. We're good. Now we're good. <laughs> now we're... 
Well, I'm down here. I don't know if this makes it any easier. May I have got myself a bit, a bit of a pickle here, people? Stupid idea going a stupid tunnel in your house. Well, I can't see what we're doing. This is not going to be a pretty weld. Actually, not a bad job. That's a win. That's a win. I mean, nobody said tunneling would be easy. Furs is out. Furs is out. Right, what does that actually look like? It's probably looking at it with a torch. Ah, I don't Okay, that's this section sorted, just ready for some concrete in. Got the mesh up, all ready for that. Now, if you want to know the job I hate the most, it's putting the mesh up. It's a horrible job, it's finickety, you've got no room, I hate it. Right, the uh, box here is ready for the fan, but I'm not going to install the fan yet because at the moment it is better off sucking the welding fumes out of the top of the tunnel rather than blowing fresh air into the bottom. But in terms of ventilation, there is actually a natural draft which comes through it. You've got the shed door open and the pantry door open. As you can see from this wonderful smoke experiment, there is just a natural breeze which comes bellowing through. And if it's a hot summer's day, it's a nice thing in the kitchen. But in the winter, I'm not going to want that, so I'll keep the doors shut. Now, it's good that we have proper ventilation because as you can see, these walls are bare steel and a lot of people ask, Colin, why do not they not go rusty? Well, basically, when we finish fabricating, I get a brush on a grinder, go over the welds, get some WD-40, spray, 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 rub, 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 and it gives this wonderful mill scale finish, which everybody loves, and there we go. And the bunker was done like that eight years ago, and that hasn't gone rusty, so I'm happy to go with that. Right, let's get some concrete down and cement this bit up. All good, all set, all gone off. Now then, the main question, the big one, the one that is absolutely through all the comments in all of the previous eight videos and the reason why this video has been a little bit late in coming is how on earth, Colin, did you get permission to do all this? Some of the council, the authorities, the state, the city, the building permit people, whatever country you're in, obviously it's all got a different name. Well, let me tell you. Now, the short and simple answer is, I didn't have permission for it, not until a week ago anyway. Um, I didn't feel like I could make this video, which is why it's so late, until I actually knew the outcome of the planning application. But, you know, I'm pleased to say it got planned permission. It's all good. I don't have to fill it in. Now, basically, it wasn't I wasn't going to tell them. It's just that I always think it's a bit easier to ask for forgiveness of what it is for permission. And also, obviously, we've put in planning permission before, you essentially just give everyone else a head start to moan or worry about it. I didn't want anybody to do that. So I thought, you know, let's just crack on with it. So up until the first video landed, it generally was a completely secret tunnel. Only a handful of people knew about it. Now, the council were actually really good. It wasn't, I think, till about video five that somebody at the council saw it on Facebook and rang me up. But they sent the guy out. He was a really nice bloke. He came around and had a look at it. You know, he was quite impressed with it. Um, he wouldn't let me film it, unfortunately. So you'll just have to imagine what a council worker is like coming around to inspect a secret tunnel. Wow. 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 But anyway, basically, one of the other reasons why I didn't apply for it is because they always want like detailed drawings. When I did the bunker, I remember applying for it myself and my drawings, you know, like the one that you see at the beginning of all the other videos, is not good enough. Has to be scale, has to be done properly. Now, with the tunnel, I could have got some of those done speculating on what it might be like, but having not really known how deep I was going to go, the directions and everything, I thought, We'll do it afterwards, it'd be a lot easier. So, basically got these drawings made up. These are pretty cool, really. Shows here, look, here's the house, and then this cross hatch bit section here is where obviously the tunnel goes. And then this little uh, chevron, well, just lined bits here, that wasn't there when the guy come up, but obviously that's just a straight bit of tunnel. So, you know, I said to him, you can work that out pretty much yourself. So, but these are pretty cool. I'm quite, I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with these. I actually might make a poster out of them. So, so we've got this one, which shows where it is in correspondence with the shed and the house. Then there's this one, which is just a tunnel on its own with the uh, 
you know, the thicknesses and everything. And um, obviously this displays the fact that the concrete got a lot thicker as we got nearer to the house, you know, because don't want the house subsiding, do it. So that's all good, quite like that. And then we've got this one, which is like a cross section, which shows all the bits, got the allow code for the pump in, bit up to the shed, bit up to the uh, the house and whatnot, the ladders and stuff. How cool is that? So there we are, that, that, bit of a gamble, paid off, it's all good. Sailed straight through, apart from the town council. They objected, strongly object to it, but clearly nobody cares what they think, so it don't matter. Ha! I didn't have planning permission, but now I do. Okay, it's looking fantastic. It's getting longer and longer. It's so cool. Now, we're about four foot from the front of the house, which is where I was hoping to get by the end of this video. But unfortunately, for various reasons, I've not been able to work on this quite so much as I would have liked to have done. Now then, when I said that I was going to do this video slightly different, there wasn't going to be as much digging and stuff, some people were like, no, we want to see digging. So in the next video, or in a few videos time, I'm going to upload a real time video of us digging solidly for about 40 minutes an hour, not edited, a couple of camera angles so you can see different things close up, but it's a bit like slow TV. So you can watch that and then you can see how labor intensive or how not labor intensive it is to actually do this project, hence why there is such large gaps in between the videos. Now, of course, you get first mining company t-shirts on the ColinFirstShop.com. If you've enjoyed this video series, subscribe, drop a like, and of course, if you're watching this video in June, you can get your Surfshark antivirus for free. Right, see you in the next one, turtle lovers.